you may run into this typical situation where an Excel chart has been copied into a PowerPoint slide and you can tell it's a chart because you select it and you see the chart design ribbon. But on that chart design ribbon, when we say, okay, I want to edit the data in Excel, what's happening is it's trying to look for the linked Excel file. And of course, this linked file isn't available because either the link has been deliberately broken or the Excel file got moved, or in this case, this was created on a different computer. And so when it comes to my computer, it's, it's not going to have access to that file. So how do we get the data out that we need to be able to use in Excel? So let me show you a technique that uses just PowerPoint and Word. So I've already copied this particular chart onto a new slide. I suggest you start by copying the chart from whatever file it was in to a brand new blank PowerPoint presentation because you don't want to mess up the other uh, file that you have. So I've copied the chart and I'm going to make it large because I want enough space for all of the data at the bottom in a data table. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to format this chart. So using the Skittle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the legend because I don't want anything down at the bottom to interfere. And I'm also going to remove the vertical axis here. So when I remove that, now it gives me a very clean bottom of the chart. And then I'm going to add a data table at the bottom. And I'm going to select the option to say, I do not want the legend keys. Because now what you can see I have is I have a very nice clean table of data down at the bottom of the slide. So I've done that formatting. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it as a PNG image. So I'm going to create a new slide here. I'm going to use a blank slide. And I'm going to take my chart, select it, hit Control C to copy it. And then you notice it takes a little while because of course it's having to copy all the data and all the contents. Now when I go to paste it, I'm going to use Paste Special and I'm going to select a PNG object. It is important that you only select the PNG object. This doesn't work necessarily with any other type of graphic object. So I'm going to say Paste Special Picture PNG, click OK. And it comes in as a picture. You can see the picture format ribbon here is shown. And I'm going to select to crop this photo. And I'm going to crop the photo so I only see that table. Okay, so I'm only seeing the data table down at the bottom. Now, when you're creating the data table originally in the original chart, uh, this chart already uses Calibri as the font. I do suggest you use some font that has monospaced numbers because I found that commas and decimals in the formatting of these numbers uh, translate easier, convert easier when you use uh, a monospace number font like Calibri. So now I've got my slide uh, with just the table as an image. Now I need to save this particular slide as a PDF. Now the way you do that in PowerPoint is, is you copy this slide to a brand new PowerPoint presentation. So I'm going to select, I'm going to open up a new PowerPoint presentation that has nothing in it. I'm going to go back, select this slide, copy it, go to my new PowerPoint file and paste the slide in and then delete any other slides that are in this file. It is really important that the only thing in this file is this one slide with the PNG table in it. Now, you can, of course, move the PNG table up to the top of the slide. That's relatively easy to do. Now, I'm going to save it as a PDF. So I'm going to say File, Save As. And here's where I'm going to save it as a PDF. So I'm going to navigate to the folder that I want first so that I can save it as a PDF. So I'm in the folder that I want. I am going to first I'm going to select that I want a PDF file and you can see I've already been doing some testing here so I'm going to say chart table number three here as a PDF and I'm going to say save. And now it's saved the file as a PDF. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Word. So I've got a blank Word document, a new blank Word document open, and now I'm going to say File, and I'm going to open that particular table PDF file that I just saved. So I'm going to go and open that. So I have my PDF file here. I'm going to select it, 
And when it tries to open it, it says, hey, this is a PDF. It asks you, do you want to convert this to an editable Word document? This is exactly what we want. So we're going to say, OK, I want to do the conversion. And you'll notice it comes in as a new uh, document here because we asked to open it up. And you'll notice it is formatted like a table. Now, it's not perfect. There are a couple of the headings missing here. And uh, so there's a couple of things that, that don't come in. But for the most part, this is exactly what we want. So we now have our table uh, as we're just to verify it's a table. Click in one of the cells and you can see the table design and layout ribbons come up in Word. That tells us it's a Word table, which is what we want because that's going to be the easiest to get the data to come into Excel properly. So now I'm going to select all the data in the table by selecting the contents of all the cells. I'm going to say Control C copy and I'm going to go to my uh, Excel uh, file that I have open again a blank Excel file. Now you might have an existing Excel file where you want this. That's OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to under paste. I'm going to say paste and I'm going to select this one match destination formatting because what that does is it makes sure that it doesn't bring that word formatting in. So now I have everything in Excel tables and most everything is correct. Now you notice again there are some missing cells where we have to go and re-add that. Uh, there might be uh, some data that's missing, although that's usually pretty good. The challenge with some of the formatting is, let's take a look at this cell right here. You notice this cell here, May, it's formatted so it's left aligned, not right aligned. That's because Excel thinks that this is actually text. Why does it think that? Because you'll notice there's a space after the comma. So any number that has a comma or a period in it for formatting may be interpreted as actually characters and it's saying, oh, after a comma, a space should come. Because if you're writing text, that would be normal. So what we do is we just simply go in and edit that particular text, take out the space, and now Excel sees it as a number. So you can go ahead and do that uh, for any of them that, uh, any of the cells that did not come in properly. But now you have all of your data from that chart in Excel format and now you can manipulate the data or do whatever you need to do with it. So we started with a uh, chart in PowerPoint that was linked to an Excel file we didn't have access to and now we have all the data in Excel. So use that technique when you need to for those Excel linked charts that are inserted into PowerPoint and that link is broken. You can now use this approach to access all the data. Here's a bonus tip when you're processing the data in Excel that you've imported from Word. As I mentioned before, some of the numbers may have spaces in them and you may not want the commas in there because it's formatting. What you can do is you can use the number value function in Excel to strip all of those out. So what I've done here is I've written a, uh, a formula. So if the, the cell is not blank, then we apply number value. Well, you can look up number value, but essentially what it does is it strips out all of the spaces. The uh, It knows what the period is and it knows what the comma is because you've told it that's a decimal separator and a, a groups separator. And so now if it is not blank, then it calculates that number nice and clean. If it is blank, then it just leaves it as null. So when I copy this particular formula across, and then down, you'll notice what I've done is I've now converted all of the numbers that were imported from Word into the proper number formatting. So now it's easy to start processing it. So that's a bonus tip if you want to take your processing of this data that you've imported to that next level. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel. Check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.